Well, Raw kicked off this week with John Cena. Since we're considering that he wasn't on Raw at all last week, except for that, except for that video package with him and Rock, which they repeated later on in the show again, which they did on SmackDown as well. I'm sure they probably did on Main Event as well, but hey, it's pretty much a typical John Cena promo. He, he gets his cheap pop for mentioning the Steel City of Pittsburgh. And he just talks about how he's ready for WrestleMania. And then you'll know what? He gets interrupted by the PT Peers, of all people. You know, this is a pretty big spot for these guys, you know? And <laughs> he got titles of Noel out there with a, with, with a nice afro wig, calling himself Rufus Pancake Patterson. And why do they call him Pancake? Because he... Because he flattens people, and you damn right he does. But it's, I I thought this was this, this is actually better for the PTPers to be in this spot. Cause hey, you need you need to start building up some of your younger talent. And and he says that that Darren Young ought to be on the box of Coco Pebbles since. Since you know that Cena's on the box of Fruity Pebbles, and and I think he owes a debt of gratitude to the Rock to the Rock on that one. So so it ends up being a match between Cena and Darren Young. You know the drill. This this match was basically a squash. But would you anything? Would you expect anything less out of John Cena now? Would you? Come on, really. And speaking of squashes, we have my boy Ryback against the guy I rooted for last year, David Otunga. And this match didn't last very long, probably about a minute or two. Ryback goes over with the shell shocked. What else would you think he would do? And then, then he goes into a promo talking about, about the six-man match at WrestleMania that he's in. But hold the phone on that one because... You got, you got Mark Henry coming out there. He's up on the ramp, and Teddy Long and Vicky Guerrero are following him out. And and Long says, "You're not. Don't take another step towards that ring." And 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 I don't applaud Vicky on a lot of things, but you know what? I applaud her for this because she's taking him out of the six man match, and it's going to be right back against Mark Henry at WrestleMania. So you better just watch it out, Smokey. Because Ryback's right coming for you, brother. And once again, another tease of the debut of Fun Don Go. He was, he was supposed to take on Kali at on SmackDown Friday night, but that didn't happen either. But but you know what? They're teasing us ever so more, ever so much more. Because Fun Dango actually got into the ring this time. And he was, he was going to ask Natalia to dance with him, but then she goes to say his name, and Fon Dang! Go get him, Kali! <laughs> so, at least they're teasing this more. I, I'm guessing he's probably not going to make his, his real debut until after WrestleMania, but hey, I like this. Keep it up. Okay. Next was R-Truth against Damian Sandow. You know, this would have been a good match for Sandow when he was, when he was first making his debut in, in WWE, because with, the, with these two guys, you have a different contrast in styles and characters. I mean, really, they couldn't be more different. But, match went on for a few minutes, and Sandow didn't... Decided to take a hike and go to the back, so I kind of really want to see what what happens again if if they, if they if they're gonna if this is gonna tease another match between them. Hopefully, it will get a definitive winner. That would be great. To quote Mr. Lundberg. All right, then you get the one-hour main event, which is the Undertaker. And I mean, he he was he was pretty short and to the point, saying, "I want my urn back." And Punk, I'm gonna hurt you, and I'm gonna hurt you bad. And then you see Punk coming, coming up in the Titantron. He's doing his, 
Um, best Paul Bear impression? Oh, yes! Buddy, I think I do it better than you. But I digress. This, this really wasn't that long of a segment for a one-hour main event. I mean, you got you got Punk in the... I don't know where the hell he was in the arena, but play, playing around them with Undertaker's urn like he's a member of the freaking Harlem Globetrotters. But, and people are going to say that, oh, the, oh, this is, he's being so disrespectful or this and that, you know, but, but Punk is doing what he's supposed to be doing. He's supposed to be getting as much heat on himself as possible. That is the role of a heel. And I, I thought this was a, actually a pretty good segment. I'm not going to lie. All right, then you had a tag team match with Team Hell No against Primo and Epico with Rosa. This match didn't last that long. And AJ just come out for a distraction, just skipping around the ring like she doesn't have a care in the world. And distraction didn't matter because Kane got the one with the choke slam and Team Hell No wins. Kind of set up something later on. There's a match between Kofi Kingston and Dolph Ziggler, a match we've seen countless times. The uh, only difference is Ziggler actually got an entrance this week. How about that? And, and Kofi's losing streak continues as Ziggler actually wins. I mean, yeah. Because he got interference again from AJ and Biggie Langston. What a what a shocker! You can't can't win a can't win a match without interference, it seems. But but then you get Danny Bryan and Kane up on the ramp after the match, and and he says that they're finally we have a, we have somebody that's gotten us on the same page, and that's you, Dolph Ziggler. And so AJ ends up making him proposing a match for the tag team titles. Dolphin Biggie Langston against Team Hell No at WrestleMania. And they say, yes, yes, yes. Finally, we know what we're going to do. Finally, we know what Dolph Ziggler is doing at WrestleMania because I had my doubts there for a minute whether he's even actually going to be on the card. Then we have a backstage interview with Y2J Chris Jericho. Along Josh Matthews is conducting it. He's talking about his match later on for the IC title, the Triple Threat match with Miz and Barrett. And then he gets interrupted by Fandango. <laughs> and Jericho, he just owns him. And he, he just kept butchering his name, like Fandango. <laughs> Fan, the Dango ate your baby. <laughs> Oh God, he he just owned Fandango on this one, and you know what? Th this would make perfect sense for a feud. I'm gonna tell you why because, hey, Jericho was once on Dancing with the Stars, and and that's kind of the gimmick of fan of Fandango here. I mean, I mean he's got this dancer gimmick, so a feud like this would make perfect sense. So then we have a match with. ADR against Cody Rhodes. I thought this was actually a pretty good match. I mean, Del Rio ended up winning with the cross arm breaker by submission. So, but as far as that that goes, he he gets attacked by Swagger after the match, and they're, they they kind of kind of going at it for a little bit, and then then afterwards you, you see Swagger and Zeb going back up to the. They look, made it look like they were going back up the ramp, but no. He ends up attacking Ricardo with a clothesline, and then he then he gets him stuck into the into the Patriot lock, and supposedly Ricardo's got a, his ankle broken. Hmm. It's I mean the way they certainly the way they had it look is like yeah, it's just, to me it certainly looked like it was. I mean whether it was or not, that's I'm sure. I'm sure he's fine, but it's, but it, but if nothing else, it's just a way to build more juice up to the into that match at WrestleMania for the World Heavyweight Title. So, so it makes perfect sense for 
swagger to go out after ADR's buddy. So. Now I'm guessing this will probably be the last entrance into the WWE Hall of Fame class of 2013. And it's SmackDown General Manager Booker, Booker T. And I believe this is a well-deserved honor for for Booker. He... I'm... I can remember watching him back in about 1992 when they when they used to have the GW off on television when he was part when he was with his brother Steve Ray as far as they used to be known as the Ebony Experience and then coming up to WCW as as Harlem Heat then going into a singles career where he became the five time five time five time five time WCW champion. And he also became the World Heavyweight Champion as well as King Booker. But I I really think this is a well deserved honor for Booker T and I and I'd like to congratulate you from the Marvelous One. Alright, then there's a match we gee, we haven't seen this match before. Randy Orton and Seamus the Super Friends against 3MB, baby. Well, <laughs> Well, what else would you expect? The Super Friends win, and and another thing you wouldn't, and you probably wouldn't expect. Oh, the shield's coming down to the ringside. Oh boy, haven't seen this before either. But then, then Big Show ends up coming out there to the ring, and then he's standing with Sheamus and Orton, and points up at the WrestleMania sign, so. So here's here's the mat here's the six man match that we thought we would see like a few weeks ago and now it looks like we're probably gonna have it. Sheamus and Orton and Big Show against the Shield. So yes. Okay, now for the IC title triple threat match between Barrett and Miz and Y2J. I one thing I the uh, opening part of this match I thought was funny was Miz and Jericho got entrances, but. The IC champion Barrett did not. Hmm. That I didn't really get. But, but as far as the match goes, I thought this it was the best match on the card tonight. I mean, normally triple threats are normally like you get some kind of a clusterfuck in there sometimes, but not really so much. And this time, there's most of the time there you had two guys in the ring, and. Barrett ended up being Mr. Opportunist, and he got the roll up on, on Miz to get the victory, and and therefore Barrett is still your IC champion. But but overall, I thought it was the best match on the card tonight. All right, then the final segment of the night: the God and Lesnar contract signing. Well, we don't get Lesnar right away, but what we do get is Paul Heyman with his crack security crew. And he's going over some stipulations that they could have went with. Having Triple H blindfolded. Or he could have had him handcuffed and shackled. Or the winner gets his wife, Stephanie. I would like to have his wife, Stephanie. But, but you know. <laughs> and maybe he should have said that the loser should have had Stephanie. Then that kind of sends Triple H over the edge. And he kind of annihilates his... Cracks security crew and he's got he's got he got Heyman up on on the table and Heyman's got a little trickle of blood coming off his head. It's like gee, I'm surprised they didn't block that out or something. But but he ends up signing the contract and and then you see Brock Lesnar come come out there and then. I I would have thought this would have been more like an MMA style match. I mean, because that's what Lesnar is best at. I mean, I mean, he was UFC champion for God's sake. And but no, what it's gonna be is a no holds barred. Uh, easy for me to say, a no holds barred match with Triple H's career in the line. Well, I mean, I I agree with the no holds barred stipulation, but. Having Triple H's career in the line? I mean, Triple H doesn't wrestle that much anymore, so. So, I don't really get the thing of that unless they're just looking to get rid of him totally. But, 
but yeah, that's that's just just kind of. I suppose that's the best thing they could have come up with, given given the circumstances. I suppose, but but yeah, that's but I I, I think it'll work. I th I think the no holds barred of it part will be really good. Well, final thoughts on this show. There's there that there's a seem to be a lot of filler on this show. I mean, and granted, there and I mean there were a couple of good good spots of this show. I mean the I mean the ADR match with Cody Rhodes was good, and then the IC title match was good, I thought, and then the and then the contract signing. I mean, it's it's kind of like a wedding on television, on WWE television or something. It's like it never goes off without a hedge. You you know it doesn't, but. Uh, just there. At, le at least we got a couple more matches for WrestleMania. So, so now, if you've pretty much got your card set up now, now you just gotta you just gotta be building up more towards WrestleMania. You only got three. You only you only got twenty days to go, as of last night. So, anyway, I am Marvelous Mark, and I will talk to you later.